How is this the first time I've looked at brew watches? Well, not looked at, I mean, I've seen them around, and that includes when I went to Wind Up Watch Fair a couple years ago. But this is the first video, and that's, that's kind of surprising to me because a lot of what Brew is doing, it seems like my vibe. The watches from Brew are cool, they're fun, playful, very thoughtful with a lot of careful details. And they're all affordable. As far as I know, I've never seen a watch from Brew for more than $600. And that includes its first automatic watch that was announced this summer and looks like it's already sold out. And these three watches, the Metric Chrono Regulators, are a collaboration with Worn and Wound. You've got to know about Worn and Wound already, right? Watch news, watches, watch fairs. I've been reading Worn and Wound for more than a decade, which is crazy. That I don't even know what time is anymore. So what in the funk is going on here? Because the closer you look at these, the more interesting and more unexpected these watches are. Let's start with some facts. Ruby red, moss green, and sky blue. Each color is limited to 200 watches and each costs $549. They're 36 millimeters across, 41.5 millimeters long, and 11 millimeters thick. They use sapphire crystals. They have 20 millimeter lugs, kind of hidden or shrouded lugs and 50 meters of water resistance. I asked Jonathan, the founder and designer of Brew, what 50 meters means, and he said, showering and light water activities, so possibly swimming, but no diving and don't use the pushers underwater. All these watches come on a steel bracelet, and they're so light that I didn't even bother weighing them. And one of the reasons they're so light is that they have quartz movements, not mechanical movements. Inside these watches is the Seiko VK68 chronograph movement, it's a mecha quartz movement, which is also the name of Elon Musk's third child with Grimes. A mecha quartz movement is a pretty normal quartz chronograph, except that the pushers are mechanical rather than being purely electronic buttons. And the chronograph seconds hand uses a spring to reset. The benefit and difference of a mecha quartz movement is that it kind of feels like using a mechanical chronograph. Kinda, sorta. Time regulation and power are quartz crystal and battery, just like all other quartz watches. But what's unusual about these movements and these watches is that these are regulators. A regulator is a type of time display historically used for accuracy. It usually means that only the minutes hand is on the central axis and the hours hand is in a subdial. In this case, the chronograph seconds hand and the minutes hand are on the central axis. The idea is that you probably already know what hour you're in, but it's the minutes that you're looking for. And I think that may be true for most people, but I don't always know what month it is, or day of the week, or even if I'm talking out loud or just internally. But this regulator is even weirder than most. The hour hand is in a subdial at the top right of the main dial, and it's a 24 hour display. That's why the subdial is split into two halves with two colors. Those are the two halves of the day. I'm going to get back to that in a minute. The subdial at 6 o'clock is the running seconds hand, and the subdial near 10 o'clock is the chronograph minutes hand. I noticed that these chronographs will only run for one hour. After that, they stop. That makes sense to me. It's probably to save on battery power. But if you're one of those people who likes a central seconds hand that's always running, either get another watch or remember to start the chronograph every 60 minutes like a normal and totally healthy person would do. I'm sure you're fine. You're all good. On my 7 inch wrist, these are really fun. These watches wear both larger and kind of smaller than other 36 millimeter watches. I'd say the dial is smaller than most 36 millimeter watch dials, and the case is larger. Because of the shape of the case, how it's more square than round, it has more surface area. And the bracelet is similar. The lugs are 20 millimeters, but the bracelet starts much wider than 20 millimeters. Again, more steel for the feel, like no one says. The bracelet tapers quite a bit too, giving the watch a kind of early 70s vintage feel that matches the design in my opinion. And the clasp has four micro adjustment spots, which is a big little detail that I'm really happy to see. I love this kind of flexibility. Brew has been making its metric collection for a while. Same case and same bracelet as these regulators, but there are some extra touches on these watches that I like. Starting from the outside, there's the colored chronograph pusher. I love these, that's all, no notes. Next, and I don't even know what to call this area, it's the corners that are under the crystal but aren't part of the dial. They have a ribbed concentric circles texture. And that texture is also on the main dial. 
But on the main dial, the concentric circles aren't centered on the main axis, they're centered on the hour subdial. It looks really good, and so do the colors on the hour subdial, but homies, I cannot read the hour. I can't read it. Not only is it small, but it's a 24 hour register, which means it moves at half the speed of a 12 hour hand, and the dial contains twice the information. I'm not the youngest watch collector, and my eyes aren't in the best shape. In fact, I've damaged them several times by staring directly at some Invicta watches. So maybe this is just a problem for me, but I doubt it. Another kind of weird thing is that only the moss green watch has loom. I don't know why, and honestly, the loom isn't really strong enough to make much of a difference, so it's just odd. Between the colors, the time display, and the case design, all of this is odd. And I like a lot about these watches. If you've seen more than a couple of videos from me, you probably know that I think a lot of people take watch collecting way too seriously. There are people that aren't prepared to admit that the reason they like these unnecessary pieces of jewelry is because they're fun. So when I see watches like this that cannot be taken seriously, but are still tasteful and elegant, when I see stuff like this, I don't know, I just, it makes me happy.